Hi there, and welcome back to 30 Days of Prayer for Our Children. We are on day 11, which means that we are entering into the second section of this three-part series of praying for our children. So the first section was days 1 through 10, and we focused on praying for our children in relation to God. So kind of their relationship with God, their view of God, their interactions with God. And we're going to move into this next section, focusing on our children in relation to self. So things we want to spring up in them or character traits or qualities or spiritual gifts that we want to see expressed or um, cultivated in them. And at the very root or foundation of that is the gift of faith. So the gift of faith, it's a tricky subject because we think about faith in Jesus, a saving faith, and salvation as being a choice. We can choose whether to believe or not. But the Bible is really clear that faith itself is a gift from God and that salvation is a result of being drawn to God in some way, which requires some action on his part. There are deep theological debates that I'm not qualified to go into and that we at Praying Christian Women don't really want to get involved in because this gift of faith is that the point is that the gift of faith is something that's God given and that we as humans don't have absolute control over. We can't pray our kids into salvation alone. Our prayers, our words are not a guarantee that salvation is going to happen. And that's a very, very hard and painful truth. I am baking cakes today. I'm multitasking. I'm recording and I'm baking cakes for my son's um, like fundraiser for his music program at his school. And I love the fact that I can take several ingredients, put them together, bake them in an oven, and, and I'm familiar with the oven, I'm familiar with the recipe, so I know what the end result is going to be. I have control over that. But faith and salvation and spiritual vibrancy, that is not something that we directly have control over. So before we pray for this gift of faith and just this next 10 days of prayer for things that we want to see manifest in our children, I think before we do that, we have to acknowledge a few things. And they're things that I struggle with. And so I'm thinking maybe others struggle too. So number one, I think we need to surrender the idea that there's a formula that we can follow or even a number of prayers per day that we can pray um, that can guarantee our child's salvation or spiritual success. Because there isn't. There just is not. And there is evidence in scripture that, you know, um, train a child in the way that he should go and he will not depart. We can train, we can shepherd, and we must. I mean, on the other side of this coin of powerlessness is a very important and heavy responsibility of stewardship when it comes to our children. We do have responsibility to present the gospel to them, to shepherd them, to pray for them. Because there is some level of responsibility to God to do those things, to give them every advantage, every um, possible opportunity to come to know Jesus and to grow in their spiritual lives. And prayer is pivotal and key to that. So how do we resolve this tension? I mean, that is what I really feel like we need to come to terms with. We have to surrender the fact that faith is a gift from God. We can't give it to them. We can't train it into them. They can't conjure it up themselves. It is a gift from God. And yet, we have a responsibility to pray, to open doors, to allow God to um, just allow his kingdom power to come down and touch them and reach them, and basically to be intercessors on their behalf. Because God has chosen to use prayer to open doorways from heaven to earth that I believe and in scripture I see evidence for the fact that they might not open otherwise if we don't do these prayers. So there's a tension there. So I think we need to first relinquish 
total control over the salvation of our kids. We need to relinquish and turn away from and just honestly um, rebuke any feelings of condemnation that you might be feeling because you feel like maybe your kid isn't where you want them to be and you feel like you haven't prayed enough or you haven't trained them up enough or you haven't made them memorize enough scripture. And I'm there, okay? I have been there and I'll be there again, I know. I have those feelings and those are from the devil. Pure and simple. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So number one, commit to God, our children. Recognize that we are not wholly responsible for their salvation. Number two, rebuke the enemy and the lies that tell us that where we are right now and where our children are right now, if it's not where we want to be, that it's our fault. Okay, rebuke the enemy. But then embrace what prayer really is for our kids. And prayer for our kids is a calling. And if you're here right now, this is what excites me, is that you're here right now, and I'm here right now, and it is not an accident. We are heeding God's call. We have been called into intercession for our children, our grandchildren, whoever you're praying for. You've been called to this. So God is already just waiting and working behind the scenes invisibly and just longing to partner with us to allow his power to just uh, be unleashed in the lives of our children. So that's exciting. So I hope that wasn't too contradictory or confusing. If you have any questions about this, if you disagree with any of this, we want to hear from you. So you can always email us at connect at prayingchristianwomen.com. You can interact on our forum um, or comments in where these videos are posted. Um, But we want to engage with you and we want to pray for you. If you're struggling specifically in your prayer life for your child, we want to join together with you and uplift you and uphold you, encourage you in your prayer life, pray for you as we pray also for our children, because we need to be in community together. But this is the take home. Faith is a gift. God is the one that we need to rely on to impart that. And we are here today called to pray for that for our kids. That's exciting to me. So I hope you'll come away encouraged from this particular day of prayer because it's really near and dear to my heart and it's something that I struggle with and I'm just really at this moment feeling hopeful about. So let's pray. Almighty God, you are the giver. You are the giver of faith. You are the source of love. You are the source of everything that is good. Right now, we just come before you acknowledging that we sometimes take a lot of responsibility on ourselves for the salvation of our children, for the spiritual vibrancy or success of our children. And we come before you now to acknowledge that we are powerless to save our kids. Only you can save, God. You are a mighty God who saves. And the fact that we are here right now praying for our kids is evidence that you are calling us into these prayers, God. You are working. You are mighty. You are powerful. And we just pray that that power would be unleashed in the lives of our children and grandchildren and kids in the sphere of our influence, God, the kids that you've called us to pray for right now. We want that power to be unleashed, God. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, on earth in the lives of our children as it is in your heavenly perfect will for their lives, God. Thank you that you are victorious over the forces of evil, over the forces of this world that might conspire to draw our children away from you. You are victorious and you are king. There is no one like you. There is no one greater than you. There is no power above you. God, the forces of evil aren't the opposite of you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no equal on the other side, on the forces of darkness. Satan is not your opposite. He is subservient to you, and he trembles at the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for that. 
God, we just pray right now that you would plant the gift of faith in the lives of the children we're praying for now, Father. That you would spark something in them, that they would be regenerated from death to life. God, if they're already believers, we pray that you would grow that gift of faith, just like the disciples prayed, increase our faith. Just like Jesus prayed for Simon Peter, he prayed in Luke 22. He says, I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. God, we pray that their faith would be increased. We pray that their faith would not fail and that they would have so much faith and so much strength that they can turn back and strengthen others, God, that they can be mighty warriors in your kingdom to bring your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven for others. God, we trust you. And we also want to take this moment to heed the call that you have placed on our lives. You've put these children in our care, whether biological or not. These kids are in our care, and you have given us and appointed us to be intercessors for them. And we heed that call, Father. We lift them up to you with holy hands. God, we treasure them. And we just commit them to your powerful, powerful and loving arms. We know that you can do way more for them than we ever could. And we just commit them to you, God. And we pray that you would show us how to pray for them more fully and more powerfully and more boldly. And we just thank you that you're faithful to hear our prayers, God. In Jesus' name, amen.